you all. Um, thanks again uh, to Team Calcutta and uh, Rajiv sir and all the entire team. I'll be speaking on um, the SCR superior capsular reconstruction. So, um, thanking our teachers who have taught us to how to do surgery. And uh, before we start off with the SCR, there's some consideration we should have in an irreparable tear. So question is, what is an irreparable tear is one by which or in which by regular surgical techniques of mobilization, we are not able to bring the cuff back to its footprint and attach it tensionless. So now, uh, though in irreparable tears, the cuff has certain attributes that will be, will be significant and an attraction in elasticity, the muscle atrophy would be significant and fatty infiltration also will be quite significant. So if you look at the grades, so uh, how do we quantify each and how do we know does this particular patient will get an irreparable tear or not? So one is, as uh, Rajkumar sir had discussed, modified patterns classification, uh, a uh, higher pattern grade would suggest that yeah, this is an irreparable tear. Again, a higher fatty infiltration grade shows that it is irreparable. Then a higher Hamada grade would show that there is a significant uh, um, you know, irreparability. So now, we have an irreparable tear. Now question is, what are the options in front of us? So options where, sometime back also we have options where uh, graft jacket or a patch, that is a uh, patch we pass the deficient cuff, we can do a partial repair and a reverse shoulder arthroplasty and muscle transfers. So now, but still it had its own set of problems and uh, problem in the expectations. So um, with, with, with all this in mind, we started the research more in anatomy. So anatomical research showed that the capsule is a very important structure in um, the shoulder. The capsule is quite thick, so the measurement would be like 5 mm to 10 mm is um, the thickness of the capsule. And it's a very significant contributor to stability of the joint. So Mihata used these principles in the uh, superior capsular reconstruction. So he took a facial latter uh, patch, doubled it, on one side he fixed it to the glenoid with, uh, with a single row, on the GT side fixed it with a double row. So how does this work? So um, before I go on, okay, there is he also also one important thing is not only this fixation of the capsule, but also the fixation of the remnant cup to this particular capsule or the graft is very important. So this works on the spacer effect. So this is the spacer effect where you, it's like the balloon what Sir had mentioned. So now if you, this works like a spacer because it actually depresses the head and gets us the correct function. Next, the trampoline effect, it prevents a superior migration. And third, it, it works by a force coupling effect. So the remnant cuff which is attached to this uh, capsule or the facial latter helps in mobility, helps in, uh, uh, in the biomechanics of the lift. So now, um, so Mihata publishes a biomechanical study in 2012, showed excellent results and um, a great outcome biomechanically. So then the SCR started becoming more and more widespread, people started using the West and they started exploring different graft, graft options like a dermalograft. Um, then in Korean studies they came up, came up with biceps SCR and now we have more and more biomechanical studies financing the SCR. And now we also have short term and mid term clinical outcome studies which shows the results of the SCR. So coming to my technique, so I have modified my techniques from what I've learned from Dr. Mihata. So this is one case scenario, it's an irreparable tear. The patient had full range, but definitely pain and weakness. The MR showed a significant uh, irreparability and uh, this is his full range before surgery. And uh, this is what we did. So here, what I've done was, okay, so I've cut the biceps, shifted it anteriorly, because the defect was a qu quite huge defect. So I was not able to bring it, bring, so I, I've decided to uh, cut the biceps, use that also as an SCR, so that I decrease my requirement for the graft. So the, I took a graft and the uh, muscle. So this is a quick video on the graft preparation. This uh, the patient is always in lateral position. Uh, midline incision is put on the uh, trochanteric area. So and we expose, um, this is how we expose it and then it is basically the measurement. Normally I double the, double the graft so because I need a particular 8 mm thickness so the, we have to double it or triple it. So and this is the measurement being taken and the preparation. So, yeah. so I'll just go on and this is the final results at 6 months the patient had excellent results, no pain, full power. So another case scenario which we normally face, a patient comes with a re-tear. 
So this is a patient who came with a retear. At six weeks, he had a fall, and you can see the anchor has been uh, pulled out. So, so intraoperative uh, picture showed that there is a significant anchor pulled out. You can see the, all the anchors. It was a complete mess, and a uh, lot of debridement was done. And uh, again, we did a, a facial atta. and uh, SCR was done. The patient went on to have good results. It is uh, interesting to note that the, the recovery is quite delayed. We can see that this is 16 weeks. Please note, um, you know, carefully note how the patient is moving at 16 weeks. We'll have a little difficulty there. Now we can see his abduction. See, that is his abduction at 16 weeks. But now another two weeks later, because the rehab is, has to be very, very meticulous and the rehab should be a deltoid-based rehab. This is at 18 weeks. So again, great results. So now, um, as the topic also mentioned, the biceps SCR. So biceps can be used as a facial, uh, instead of the facial latter. Especially, I would use it in smaller, um, you know, tests, retracted but smaller tests. So, and I shift the biceps to wherever I find the deficiencies. Could be anterior, middle, or even the posterior. So this is a, this is an excellent graft, quite thick, and an excellent depressor. And the quality of tissue is pretty good. So this is a biceps SCR, or we can also call it reverse biceps stenodesis. Gives an excellent coverage and excellent results. The biceps can also be doubled, tripled if you have bigger defects. Coming to just a few uh, slides on the outcomes. So when we look at the outcome studies with facial data, excellent outcomes. So lesser retail rates, the function is better, the range is also very good. So when we come to dermal allografts, which were we are not available in India, so again they show good results, 70% good results with Artoflex patches and all that. So again, um, Burkhardt's two-year study showed that results are maintained excellent results, and uh, one-year study is showing excellent results. So we overall results are good, but certain things to be keep in mind. So whenever using a dermal allograft, we find the thickness is very less. So the minimum requirement is if you are using it in the dermal allografts. It is recommended more than 3 millimeters. But facial data in the Mihata study showed that minimum 8 millimeter of graft is required. Thicker the graft, it is better. And there are higher retail rates with a dermal allograft. Coming to biomechanical outcome studies. So biomechanically, now we know we, we have more information how the SCR works. And it is recommended that whenever we do, we have to do, uh, yeah, I'll take a few moments more. So whenever we do um, an SCR, a side-to-side -side repair is very important. And if you are doing a facial lata SCR, only a posterior side-to-side -side is required. But at the same time, if you are using a dermal allograft, because it stretches out more, an anterior as well as posterior side-to-side -side repair is very important. So graft thickness, this Mihata study showed that 8 millimeter graft is excellent. So you know we have to double it or triple it to get the adequate thickness. Then shoulder positioning, what position the shoulder should be put the graft and tension it between 15 to 45 degrees with the patient in lateral position. So our question is, do we should do an acromioplasty? Yes, it is recommended to do an acromioplasty. Why? Because the unevenness or the rough surface of the sharp acromion should be tapered off. We should have a smooth underlying surface. Too much acromioplasty is not recommended because it increases. So if the, the acromion becomes thin out, then there is a proximal migration. So minimal acromioplasty is recommended. So there is something called as SCR plus. So where we do an SCR on the glenoid side, but we also put a patch on the undersurface of the acromion. Again, increase the spacer effect. So also a good technique. Then question would be like, uh, or the main question would everybody would ask is, does it heal? Yes, definitely. Definitely, even the dermal allografts tend to heal. There is only one case report of this explanted graft which shows tendon-like changes. Facial auto also increases when you look at the Doppler studies. It shows healing. So, if minimally invasive graft has better outcomes. So, there are some Chinese studies on the augmentation of facial lata also. So, um, overall, to sum it up, I would say that SCR is a great option, provided we have, we have, we have the anterior and the posterior force couples. If the subscap should be intact or should be a, repair, should be a repairable subscap and the posterior force couple, then definitely SCR is a good choice. So, I would just sum it up. And again, inviting you, all of you to Manipal Shoulder Conference planned on June 5. And uh, we are also doing a superior capsule reconstruction workshop. So uh, thank you again. Thanking the chair again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ayapan, for this excellent talk. Uh, do we have questions? Yes. 
Dr. Nair, very nice talk. So, <coughs> I have two questions. One is, uh, what is the graph site? What are the graph site morbidity that you have, uh, ex you, have you have seen till date? And what are the functional improvement that we get with SCR? Do they have a good sub, uh, supraspinatus, uh, intact supraspinatus like, like function after the SCR? Yes. So, uh, the, the, first the answer to the first question, like um, there have been studies on graft morbidity, graft site morbidity. So, now the trick is, it was noticed that whenever we take a facial lighter patch from the thigh, if you close it, if you close the facial lighter under tension, it is noticed that these patients have uh, higher pain and uh, they don't improve much. They always complain pain for a long period of time. Now the trick is that is you, when you when you compare that to you should don't you should not close close the facial lata. Just do a subcutaneous and a skin closure. That's it. You know if you don't try to do it, then have there's no pain. The patients are quite comfortable and they can go for uh, most of my patients. Uh, they never complained of uh, especially for only the first few weeks or a month. After that, they're okay. The second question was um, yeah, the function. Yes. So in all our patients, uh, so the rehab is the key. So instead of a regular rehab, we can't do a rotator cuff rehab. The, so how the rehab is, first six weeks we have to immobilize. After six weeks the rehab starts. And the rehab has to be a deltoid based rehab like how we do in a reverse shoulder. It is completely very different. So and the, the expectation when with the patient will have a kind of a normal function would be double of a normal, so if it's a rotator cuff three months you expect normalcy. This would take like a four and a half, five months. And then. Uh, um, it is noticed that a patient with pseudoparalysis, complete pseudoparalysis, so they go up to 4, 4 plus and for example a patient who don't have uh, pseudoparalysis but got adequate power, then they go to full power. This is what in my experience what we have noticed in our patients. Uh, doctor, uh, there is a question here. Sir. Regarding this reverse biceps tenosis that you have said, yes, sir. but there the, if you don't fix it on the glenoid side, it's only fixed on the humeral side. Yes, sir. So it is not exactly an SCR that you are talking about. Sir, uh, if when we look at uh, the capsule is attached on, it is normally a capsule is attached on the both the glenoid as well as on the GT side. So now we already have a ready-made attachment when if the, of the biceps which is normal on the glenoid. So we use that and put it only on the GT side, sir. So it works very well like a capsule. So it is normally, so if we do, when we do a, uh, for example in scenarios, where we the biceps is completely gone there's no biceps so earlier when mihata what he used to do was he used to uh, remove the um, uh, labrum superior labrum completely and he used to put the facial lata on top of it so that means so he that is how the capsule now what he does is if the biceps is intact he leaves alone the biceps so this is what um, what i do is i incorporate the biceps because we can avoid the middle row the glenoid anchors that's also because I have seen young girl redoing a, a calf repair, filling up the gap using the biceps tendon exactly like that. Yes. Sir. And he calls it a calf repair. He doesn't say <laughs> it's an SCR. That's why I was slightly. It is called biceps. Confused. Now they t we t call it as biceps SCR, reverse tenodesis, the bio SCR, different names for that. Have you ever tried the other one? Sir? You, like you do, tenodesis, one end of it, when you release the biceps, take, take a longer, longer biceps out of it, uh -huh. redo it and attach it on top again. You yes, yes. Think. Sir, there have been picture there. Uh, yes, the, the, that is only in, depends upon, so it's a bigger defect. So there have been papers which show that we can double it. That means take the double length and attach to the GT side and then bring it back to the glenoid side. There are even tripling is there. Let we go there, come back okay. again. Yeah, this, it's a, it's a, so you use the, grip. the only thing is we have to mobilize till here and then take it. That's it. But it is very, uh, if, we do, if you don't want I to take the facial works, It works better if the bicep is healthy, so the, yes. you know, the primary yes. anchor is already there. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr.